It goes recording in progress. It's just a bit recording in progress. <laughs> I'm well, here. Back, sorry to. I was going to say that immediately takes me back to uh, the old pole position arcade, where you say prepare to qualify, and he's like, the, the arcade speaks. <laughs> yes. I, I know the pole. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Clearly, the coffee hasn't kicked in. I remember the pole position cartoon, and I absolutely love that. And I wanted the great. toys so badly. And yeah. I, didn't know, I don't think you could get them in the UK. I tried. What? Did they have any toys at all? No, I, I, but it was based on a computer game that then got turned yeah, into a cartoon that had nothing to do with the computer game. That's right. It was, it was part of the, like the, I think it was NBC or CNBC. One of the, one of the CBS or NBC, one of the channels of the early yeah. 1980s had like the Saturday Supercade. And it yeah. was it was all these it was all these cartoons based on arcades. So it's Pole yeah. Position, Cuba, Donkey Kong, Space Ace, and Dragon's Lair, I think. And it's oh, quite really? funny because yeah, that was the first time you had uh, the appearance of Mario. And he was voiced by, if I remember rightly, my goodness, Peter Cullen, Optimus Prime. Really? So kind of yeah, it was really I quite not, random. No, I did not know that. Yeah, okay. And I think I think in that in that cartoon, Super Mario was like the bad guy because obviously you know donkey kong if you're making a show about donkey kong mario's the uh antagonist as it was so yeah What's about, I suppose sorry they're completely yeah no no i was gonna say it, it really if you think about it if you can have donkey kong in a cartoon you, you're gonna have to have mario as the bad guy because that's the only way it's gonna work yeah at, of course, the, yeah. at that time yeah 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 I completely anyway, agree. sorry for those that don't know i am here with james etock and um, we're going to have a bit of a chat, a bit of an interview, a bit of a laugh, and hopefully everyone enjoys it. So yeah, um, I do have a few questions, James. Sorry okay. to ruin off. I well, otherwise, it'd be a pretty weird interview. If I, just <laughs> like I don't know. I've seen, I've seen some really weird interviews. I had uh, a friend talk to me about stand-up, like stand-up jokes and being a comedian and things like that and they said oh there's an open mic night you should totally do it will be amazing and i went i'll consider it like i'll think about it i'll take it on, take it on advisement you know and um, he said you can't be any worse than this one guy and i went why what happened and he went he went up on stage and he went yeah my wife's just left me and then burst into tears and the audience oh, no. weren't sure if they were supposed to laugh or console yes, the guy that, yeah <laughs> So oh, no. Yeah, it's a weirder things could happen than an interview with no questions, but who knows? Yeah, that's uh, like stand up and no laughter. That's quite a tragic time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, unfortunately, oh, um, Alex, who is my um YouTube best friend, can't actually be here today, which is really sad. Oh but he did he did send me some questions. Oh okay, that's yeah, that's good. Um I'll say hello, hello Alex, there you go. Yeah, to go, hey Alex, how you doing? Hey Alex. Uh, you will see this. But sorry, I, uh, magic disappeared. Oh my goodness, that was amazing. You know when you vanished? Yeah. When you when you dipped out of frame then, for some yes. reason you you yourself disappeared and all, all I was left with was your very convincing real background. Yeah, no, very this, is, surreal. this is my back garden for anyone that doesn't know. Yeah, clearly. It's it's quite yeah. interesting though, like as you held up your hand there, an amazing black shape took place <laughs> as well. So yeah. Oh, that's just... that's just a glitch in the matrix. That's <laughs> <laughs> oh dear lord. <laughs> <laughs> well, we did have some some interesting questions, some yes. masters of the universe and He Man questions, obviously. Oh, I don't know anything about the... what. <laughs> no, why would I? Why would I ask you that? I'm so How sorry. can I help you? Bad <laughs> person interviewing. I'm so sorry. Hopefully, you like my T-shirt. It's not my Ninja Turtles T-shirt, but this is my Masters of the Universe T-shirt, which I will. Any Masters of the Universe representation is called me. What's the um? What's on it, aside from the logo? Oh, What's below the logo? I, I could stand up, which would be absolutely horrendous, or I could just do do that oh. a little bit. I don't know if you can oh, see. I see. Oh, it's the, yeah, 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 I get it. It's it's, it's the game. Oh, it's, it's interesting. That's, that's all kind of artwork based on when Emiliano did the um, BCI DVD covers. It's kind of based oh, yeah. on that. Oh, yeah, okay. It's, like, it's, all well, the, it is, it the is officially, yeah. it's officially licensed. You can't see the label. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's totally licensed. legit, yeah. Yeah. yeah, nice. Uh, no, I got it. I think I got this in in Target, <laughs> of all places. Oh, sounds about right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you can buy pretty much anything there. Um, so one of the questions Alex did ask, which was, um, "Who is your favourite Ninja Turtle?" Oh, Michelangelo. See how quick that was. And that wasn't even a. No, he's always my my favourite. Yeah. yeah. Easy. Yeah, yeah. Just I, I remember like I I think just oh god my goodness but I think. 
partly it was the voice. I always loved um, Townsend Coleman's voice as Michelangelo, yeah. the whole whoa dudes and uh, all that like. stuff. But it was the it was the fact that he had nunchucks, which I always thought was a really cool weapon. And obviously mm. over here in the UK, when the show was you know heavily edited, yeah, his weapon almost became like a thing of mystery. So like, what did what happened in that scene, which was obviously cut for time, like with Michelangelo's nunchucks? Then as the years went by, you finally got to see it, and obviously, you know, not only was it, I mean, the intro was um, cut to shreds because of the nunchucks. So it was interesting. Yeah. Around about 1995, I went to like a, a flea market and picked up a randomly a flea market in a place called Cuffley, just outside of London, picked up yeah. a, a VHS. And I was like, this is an American release. This is 95. So yeah. this is early 95. So it's not like you, you have access to the internet or you can just buy online. I was like, oh, so I bought this tape. And luckily, my v VHS machine at the time could play American and uh, PAL, uh, yeah, American so PAL and, and uh, NTSC. Yeah, NTSC. NTSC. Yeah. So I put this NTSC tape in a plane. And I was like, oh my goodness, I'm seeing the intro, all of it. And it was, um, I mean, admittedly, it was a terrible episode. It was uh, one that I didn't care for, Cowabunga Shredhead, when Michael Lange's Lone Shredder switch personality. Oh, yeah, I remember that way. I was like, why couldn't it, why, yeah. yeah, although why couldn't it be one of the first like five episodes or something? But um, yeah, Michael Angelo, I always thought it was like, he had such a cool weapon, cool personality. And then, yeah, eventually they, uh, they ditched his nunchucks and gave him a grappling hook because of bloody censorship, damn it. I, I do remember it just being incredibly lame when they did that. And I remember thinking, oh, like, yeah, grappling hook, because, you know, ninjas, grappling hooks, yeah. sure. It's, it's, it didn't even make sense in, like, yeah, you just see him. It, it's weird. Like, grappling hook can be used in situations and yeah. in battle, of course it can, but it just didn't. Yeah. It wasn't convincing at all. No. It just looks silly. Like you've got all these guys with <laughs> these, these other ninja tails with traditional weapons, like a sai, yeah. a bow, a katana, and then you've got him with a grappling hook. It's like, mm. oh come on, man! You could have found something else. But yeah, it was it was really frustrating when they made that change. But then I think by then, um, personally speaking, I I checked out of the cartoon. So like by by the end of season three, when yeah. things got when I always describe Ninja Turtles as a show that started off, you know not closely aligned with its comic books in terms of the cartoon but it was it was taking itself seriously in a wacky world but yeah. then by mid to late season three it was just like oh let's just be wacky and that was the problem it just became a bit too you know i was having this conversation with last night with someone about you know barney stockman shows up like baxter's twin brother it's like wait what <laughs> just for one episode and it's just and then, and then when the episode came like raphael knocks and dead and yeah. They all became like, oh, just, oh, I was like, no, no, I'm good, I'm good. So I mean, I think, at some point I'm going to have to watch all those episodes that I never did watch. Well, apparently... We'll see. I mean, they're... they're yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I was going to no, say, say, apparently they did, like, um, they realised that it was getting a little bit silly. Oh. So I think it's around season five or six, they did not a reboot, but they took themselves a lot more seriously, brought in a new villain. Um, and the animation changed. Yeah, basically um, that, was when, that was when they were watching, they, they were looking around and Batman the Animated Series was huge. Yeah. So they brought in, they, they had Shredder for one more season, but then they brought in Dreg. Yes. And I think it was Lord Dreg. They brought him in and they call, they call those episodes, there's like two seasons worth, it's the final two seasons, they call them the yeah. Red Sky episodes because it's they try red. and, yeah, yeah, because the sky is red. They try and, basically, which is kind of, uh, jumping on what Batman the Animated Series was doing, but it, yeah. by that point I think everybody had kind of checked out of Ninja Turtles. Yeah. It had been a phenomenon for about three or four years and then yeah, yeah. by about 94, 95 it was just like, ah, they'd done the third movie, Turtles in Time, and yeah, people were just like, ah, I'm good, I'm good. So yeah. it's a shame, but um, and Ninja Turtles, I still think it's a great cartoon. But yeah, to answer the long-winded version of answering that question, Michelangelo. Michelangelo. Mine is, mine is Raphael. Raphael was the first ever Ninja Turtle toy I bought. Really? I don't have it anymore. But yeah, Raphael, it was, I remember going it to was the my toy first store one. Just... And unfortunately, wow. I had, this isn't the original, original I had. This no. is a rotate cast. But um, the original one that I had, I got because I passed my swimming certificate. Oh, and awesome. Because the reason I learned to swim was so I could get a Ninja Turtle. Oh, that's and pretty cool. My, my grandmother bought it for me, but I let it go to a less fortunate family in the 80s oh it's very sweet um obviously you, you like me remember the 80s and very unfortunately at, at the time there was a lot of recession and my dad's 
friends, family didn't have any money and it was a bit of a moment where they weren't going to have everything for Christmas. Oh, and I couldn't live with that as a kid, so it was like, here, wow, that's my really... initials. Yeah. Oh, that's really sweet. <laughs> they got your rough hair. Yeah, I know, for all these, yeah. all these people that think I'm a bad person, I'm not really. It's just <laughs> no. I just put <laughs> you <laughs> But yeah, I remember owning that Raphael toy. It was, it was actually for a long time. It was it was the only Ninja Turtle I owned, and then I never. I think I got no. I got Leonardo, but then Michelangelo and Raphael were the um, those. It was like pizza spinning. Oh my goodness, was it pizza oh, yeah. spinning Michelangelo? The, the and, ones? And yeah, the crazy right. ones. Yeah. It was like Donatello. It was like sewer swimming Donatello. Then you had. Oh. I think it was pizza spinning Michelangelo. Okay. Was, or was, or something, Rafa and Raphael did something as well. It's been a while, but they were they were my kind of Raphael and Michelangelo's. Um, and I, yeah, I, unfortunately, I own the uh, the very ill-looking Shredder figure, which is all like, hunched over like that. <laughs> yeah, why did it look like he had some sort of spinal issue? What was well, that? The, the okay. thing is that I think when you look at that artwork, they kind of based. So when you look at that figure, they kind of based it on the kind of Eastman and Laird black and white comic version oh. where he's, he's kind of very sinewy and very thin yeah whereas obviously they bulked him up for the cartoon but it was, it was really where they made that decision because even if you look at the original turtle figures they're clearly based on even though they've got the color things they're clearly still based on those original yeah. media, re original yeah. comics to, to a degree um and so when the shredder came out i think he was still based on that which is why he's got those kind of weird that. yeah he's got that weird posture but it was a, a terrible action figure he just stood there <laughs> like, that. like this yeah <laughs> What it was it like was that. Really, yeah, it was really horrible. And <laughs> the thing I never noticed, never ever noticed until about a year or two ago, was Super 7 released a kind of really cool um, uh, Shredder figure. Yes. And he came with like an additional head. And on the additional head, where Shredder had his like helmet, yeah. there was eyebrows on it. And I was like, what? What's that? Why have they done oh, that? Because the missing like, the original figure. Do you, have you, and I was like, what do you mean the original film? I said, I owned the original film. I was like, look again. So I went yeah. online, looked at the original film. I was like, how did I miss that they painted the top of his helmet as a skin and eyebrows? Such a bizarre decision. I don't, but I think his kids, though, when we looked at the action figure, not only did our imagination take complete control of what we were looking at, but I convinced myself it was rust. On the helmet and not eyebrows. Oh, I didn't even. I mean, that's a good theory. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't even clock it. Like I say, I just. I, <laughs> I don't know why. I, I. I had the Bebop figure. I had Rocksteady at one point. But I never remember. If you. It was if you say. You know the Shredder figure. They painted eyebrows on his helmet and ears. I was like, no, he didn't. But it's, <laughs> I owned that figure for years, and I, I completely missed that. I mean, it's maybe or maybe I saw it. I kind of removed it yeah, yeah yeah maybe i saw it just was like no that does not exist you know it's just so weird but um, oh, here's the here's the shredder oh, <laughs> and he's like shredder, shredder or i'll just i'll do i'll do that oh biff i'm not this video is not sponsored but here's a bit of free advertising for my friend there we go oh your, your cups see through as well <laughs> that's what happens in australia we just become translucent it's just oh wow yeah that's, that's what happens cool. it's because apparently the world's flat and we're not real so that could be why i was, I was watching a um who was i watching so i was watching someone on, on youtube talking about the the um yeah the the the, the whole uh, flat earth thing it was just so fascinating it was only like a five minute clip it made me laugh so much i was like if you're ever yeah, having that. a bad day those flat earth videos you know are the best in my opinion, I, can't remember, I was watching. I was watching someone else a few a few months ago, and they said, they said, scientists are so like aghast at that theory that the Earth is flat that they can't even be bothered to argue the point. <laughs> of the Earth is spherical. It's just like, yeah, you believe the Earth's flat. Like we can't, we can't, yeah, do that, do that. If you, if that's what you need to leap onto, you, you be you, you do that. You know, more power to you. It's like, my the... goodness. Yeah, the excuses you hear for, for why the Earth's flat are just, in my opinion, absolutely hysterical. But um, I, I mean, like, I, I, you know, it's nice that people believe in something, but it's like, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I just think, wow, yeah, just um, yeah, it's actually though. mind boggling. Yeah, way. yeah, exactly. Yeah. I do, I do have a question because I've, yes. I've showed you I got this for Christmas, but you know. Oh yes, my uh, my animated adventures book. 
Yes, yeah. Um, yeah I'm I'm going through it slowly. Um, not not the quickest, but there are some really like I will say absolutely amazing things there because for years I wanted to know what Orko looked like under the mask. Oh yeah. And you can see it. I'm not going to show everyone. They've got to go and buy the book. Buy the book? Yeah. Yeah, go buy the book. You want to know what it looks like? Go buy the book. I'm not going to bring it up. Because I know you get stuff in the comments like, why didn't you show it? Go buy it. To be cheap. Go buy it, yeah. yeah come on. You've got to so Christmas because asked for it. Go and ask Santa. Yeah. Be a good boy, you'll get it. Go and ask Santa. Yeah. No, because they, um, I think it's, they reprinted it about a year, just over a year ago, I think. Yeah, they didn't actually right. tell me. Dark Horse just ran a reprint. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> and um, yeah, and it's, it's, I think it's, it never retails to my knowledge for like ridiculous amounts of money at the moment yeah. until it finally sells out again. But um, yeah, I, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty awesome. It came together amazingly. Dark Horse were, yeah, one of the best companies I've ever worked with that owned the He-Man license. Because I've worked yeah. with so many companies over the years, from DVDs to comics to books to toys to whatever. But Dark Horse were just so, they're like scarily easy to work with. Like I sent them over. They, they, it's, it's amazing. I'm so glad they kept everything in the stages of that development of the book because the first yeah. thing they sent me was, I sent them the text and they sent me like a four, it was the Evil Sea episode so at the time it was four pages and they showed me they sent me here's our layout and i just looked at it i remember i looked at it and i had to walk away from my computer not because i was angry but i was just like oh no this is this is not right and that was yeah. no disrespect to anybody there but i said this is this is really bad this is really bad so i had to walk away come back an hour later yeah. and go right i need to you know how do you tell a publishing company you know let's try it this way but dark horse uh, uh, uh open to suggestions so i said like well look, here's my suggested design but the thing i said to them was i said first and foremost because dark horse at that point we used to doing art books yeah so you can imagine that book that you've got there but as an art book so images were like overly big and text was it was all very it was very pretty yeah but it wasn't a guidebook okay it was like bit of trivia here deleted scene here trivia there cell there drawing here this yeah and it and it and i was like this done. so i said to them i said i said treat it as a guidebook not as an art book yeah um and yeah, they, yeah. they said okay what so they said do you want to i said do you mind if i send over my suggestion I'm like, yeah sure so i sent over i still got it a, a pdf i created a pdf like a style guide yeah and i said like master universe style guide and it goes through and he said here's how best to present the episodes. I said, here's how you treat storyboard images. So if at any point, it's, you know, the artwork is the same, because I send them like episode, like all, all the artwork in that book. So this is for this episode. It was like all numbered and stuff. So they could yeah. easily pick and choose. And so when you get a storyboard, try and compare it to the cell like this, da, da, da. went through, oh, and then I did this pay these uh, two pages, uh, sorry, yeah, two pages is light layout. I said, you know, structure like this. And they took that. And then they came back to me with their version of it. And it was like, this is perfect. It was like a perfect coming in the middle, like together yeah. of two. There, it was like, there, it was my, my suggestions, they completely took on board and said, okay, but let's do it in our way. And they did theirs. I was like, that's brilliant. And it was, it was fantastic. It came together. So and they were so easy to work with Dark Horse. It was, it was, it was, you think, I'd worked with them a, a bit before because we'd done the um, Art of Heat Man book. Yes, and yeah. they've done the filmation. Like. Yeah, they've, they've, <laughs> it's they've, they've done the. Um, say again. It's on my list. It's on your list. It's, it's on, on my list. list. Yeah, yeah. The um, the art of He-Man book was. Yeah, they sent it to. I wasn't really involved initially, and then they sent it to me, Emiliano, and Josh Van Pelt, and said, "What can you guys contribute?" And I looked at the filmation se section. And this is no disrespect to the writer of that original section, but I was just like, mm. oh, this is all wrong. For example, there was, there was one line in there that I'll never forget, which said, He-Man was the first cartoon of the 1980s to depict on-screen violence. And I was like, say what now? Uh, it's excuse like, it's, me? He, yeah, it's like, Charlie, what now? It's, it's, it, He-Man was like the complete opposite of that. Yeah. You know, and so I, there was all those strict regulations. So I was like, ah, oh. but not only that, the, 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 the artwork and everything was presented really kind of like, oh. So I said to Dark Horse, can I do the filmation section myself? And they were like, yeah, sure. 
So I went through it and I did all the text and I, I broke it down into, they, it was all random. And I said, like, how about we break down the animation process? So you have like storyboards and then, or like, sorry, designs and storyboards and pencils and layout and cells and it kind of builds. And they really loved that and I sent it over and based on that, they kind of said, you did an unofficial cartoon guide. And I was like, yeah, they were like, do you want to make it official? I was like, don't mind if I do. So yeah, we, we did that together. And um, yeah, it was, it was I'd, I'd love to work with them again at some point, but um, I've never really pursued any opportunities. But yeah, they were, yeah, the Dark Horse were, were bloody awesome. I've heard people say like, oh, Dark Horse don't know what they're doing. So like, they clearly do, because they yeah. did a series of books yeah. which were bloody awesome. I, I think and the other thing is, even, even, sorry, even down to like something that I thought they're not going to budge on, which was that that logo on your shirt. Yes. The classics logo. It was the, yes. it was the classics logo that they wanted to be branded on everything. So if memory serves me correctly, the front cover of the Art of Hema book has that logo, I think. Uh, and most books. Oh, no, 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 not, not my art. Shira. But yeah, I don't know if the original did. I know that they changed the front cover, I believe. Oh no, so so what sorry. it was, so what they, the Art of He-Man book had oh, that yeah, mini sorry. collection. Yeah, sorry, mini collection did. Uh, the later, the newspaper strip and the character compendium. But I ah. said to them, I said, look, this is a guide to He-Man and She-Ra. I said, yeah. I want to put those logos on. And Dark Horse, you know, went back to, I think it was Mattel or whoever and said, look, we want to do this. And they were like, okay. so. Because originally mm. they said you've got to have that logo on there, and I was like, oh. So yeah, I, I designed the cover, and I said I want like the He-Man and she on there. But that that um, that cover's been the same the whole time. The oh, okay. if you ever see any other, yeah, any other covers online were the preliminary ones I did. I did like a solo one of He-Man saying I have the power. Yeah, I've that seen one that. kind of that yeah, always yeah. gets used as like a promo image, and it's like that's not yeah. the official cover. That was okay. literally I a work in progress. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, it was, it was just one of those things, like I did that, um, they, they said, that was when they just wanted He-Man on the cover, and then like a little burst in the corner saying, also featuring She-Ra, and I said, I said, no, this is a He-Man and She-Ra guide, man, this yeah. is, those two cartoons are one world. Yeah. I said, to have He-Man on the cover, and then she was in it too, I was like, that doesn't, and, and Dark Horse were awesome, and like, okay, we agree, we, we'll, we'll, we'll uh, go back, and they came back and said, yeah, we'll put those formation logos on the cover, and, um, yeah, they, uh, they, yeah, like I say, pleasure to work with. Oh, fantastic. Um, what, what made the book happen in the first instance? Well, how did it come into fruition, as it were? Well, like, like I say, the, um, I'd done the unofficial one and they mm. kind of, they kind of came back to me because of what I'd done on the, um, Art of Heat Map, that yeah. formation section. Yeah. So I'd kind of piqued their interest in the, oh, this guy knows quite a bit of the cards about the cartoon. I believe Val Staples had spoken to Dark Horse as well and said, you should like see if James is up for doing that. Yeah. So Dark Horse comes to me and say, like, would you be up for um up for making this book happen? I was like, yeah, sure. So it was, it was that because I said, look, it's kind of half of the book is already done because it's the unofficial He-Man guide. All I've got to do is repurpose the text, add a few things, because a few things have come to uh, light since I did the unofficial book guide but then this time when I said oh so I can include images it was like as many as you want and it was yeah. it was there was so many things that kind of worked out amazingly like coincidental like the they had oh, two pages in the book which they said they can do a transparency thing so you'd yes. have a page and then you could do a transparency thing yeah. I said what pages do they fall on they said um and they gave me the page numbers I was like okay and we'd already mapped out the book to a degree at that point. They said, you've got these are your options for where the temp, where, where the pages can fall. Because, you know, the whole assembling of a book process, you, you can't just go, I want the page to appear there or there. It's like, no, it has to go in certain places. And one was where the, if you look at Reign of the Monster in that book, that's where those storyboards, you got the storyboards and then you got the acetate overlay, which is the final images. Yeah. So we did that one. And I was like, that's perfect. because I've got the storyboards for that. But then it worked out so perfectly with the Orco reveal that it was the last page of season one. And I was like, oh my goodness. They were like, you page whatever. And I was like, that actually falls right at the very end, like the whole season one, you know, 65 episodes. And then boom, there's the Orco reveal. I was like, this is perfect. And then the second 65 episodes, it was just, it fell together so very nice. And there, yeah, so many things and it, it flowed really well. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it was it was it was a really good experience, and it's one of those that I would not change. It's like, would you change anything for that book? I'm like, no, not at all. It's um, that was a proper like mic drop moment. Where I'm like, yeah, I'm kind of done.